In this game we're going to look at how powerful the Visage is in the mid game, even under the worst of circumstances. You're going to see me in this game losing the lane really hard. I'm also playing against a lineup that is very very strong as Visage. And yet, I'm still going to do really well in this game. Lessons that cannot be unlearned. So I've planted my ward in mid, and now I'm coming down here to um, help out my team. We're going to try to contest this rune and maybe even get a kill or at least a good trade here with our numbers advantage. This is something that I think is usually worth doing. In some particular matchups, blocking is really important. Um, and honestly, maybe Visage is such a matchup, Visage against the uh, squad. But um, I'm done here, I'm gonna help out my team. And I'm gonna go on this Gyrocopter. Of course, I slow him down and he gets stunned up. And I don't wanna chase it too far, I can't afford to spend too much time here. But uh, with my presence here and the 3 to 2 advantage, uh, we get the first blood um, on our X, which is quite nice for him. Of course, it would be best if, if I got the first blood here. Um, would really help me out in this very unfavorable matchup in the mid. But um, at least we got the first blood, and all I'm really missing out is like one creep here. Like this, uh, this co op is gonna get one deny for free and one last hit for free, yeah, but that's it. So this matchup is very, very tough. And Visage in general is a quite uh, weak mid laner. There's really only like a handful of matchups where you're. Like even or even slightly ahead, uh, something like a Zeus or a Skyroth Mage, uh, you you just fine against those heroes. But uh, Quap with all the damage instances from a dagger is really tough to deal with because uh, um, with Grave with Cloak, it's great against uh, nukes that just deal one instance of damage. But against uh, the dagger from Queen of Pain, it's really difficult to do. And also because Queen of Pain has such so much range, it's difficult to actually go up to the to the wave and uh, and pull it back. And also Queen of Pain is not a hero who really wants to push out the lane. Um, so she often just has these static lanes and then it's very difficult to do any sort of contesting. So you can see in the network chart here, I've got four last hits and no denies. She has eight and five. This is not going particularly well so far. Um, but what you want to do in this matchup is just uh, play it defensively, uh, buy plenty of region and uh, just try to survive until you're level 6 and uh, try to not get killed. Um, so I go f forward here uh, to try to get this last hit and take a lot of damage. Um, still have myself and in terms of starting items, usually I start with 3 branches and uh, a crown. And right now Quap goes a bit too far forward, it's a lot of damage here. And I try to go for the kill here with uh, Soul Assumption here, but it doesn't quite work out. Uh, so usually, as I said, I, I go for, for a triple branch and a crown gives you a lot of stats. Uh, Quap links forward here, but that's not really doing anything. Um, so this, uh, this that build gives you a lot of stats, gives you 7 to all stats and uh, helps you with last hitting. And uh, you have that crown which you then use for your dominator. Um, but here against Quap, I went for a bit of a different build. I went the uh, circlet and ring of region and like a bunch of branches and so on. Um, I thought this would help me a bit with the staining, but uh, honestly, I think I should have gone for the crown here. Just like last hitting is so difficult if you don't have the, have that uh, extra stats from the crown. Um, so I'm trying my best to do this sort of trading, and so far I'm doing a reasonably good job. But you can see I'm already falling behind. I'm half a level behind, and. Um, I just had to buy so much region. I'm running myself out some region now. Uh, a bunch of mangoes, a uh, tango. I need those mangoes to be able to um, contest her with Soul Assumption. When she goes and even she blinks on you, you need to be able to fight back. You can't just uh, leave out Soul Assumption, which is also why I went for Soul Assumption at level 3. Usually that's something you take at level 4 if you're in the mid. Um, but in those matchups where they're trying to kill you, or they might be trying to kill you, you need an earlier Soul Assumption. It's one of the strongest nukes if there's like an open fight going on, uh, because of course you need those uh, stacks that uh, get filled up when either you take damage or um, any hero like whether it's ally or, or enemy nearby takes damage. Um, so in these kinds of uh, um, harassment battles where you're just trading, the soil assumption is not that great, but if it's an actual fight to the death, it's one of the strongest spells in the game uh, in the laning phase. Uh, so she gets this haste rune, she skips harassing me, and if you look at the net worth here, um, I'm actually near the bottom here. 
Um, and some point I actually drop to the, the very bottom here. And she goes for the kill here and uh, doesn't quite get it. And But she also survives, so... Uh, we're both trading a lot, but the thing is, she is getting a lot more last hits and she can afford to fly herself out selves and, and so on. Whereas I'm so poor, I can't even afford a self right now. So I'm kind of waiting with the courier, uh, trying to get that uh, 110 gold. And uh, the runes are coming up uh, in a couple of seconds and hopefully we're going to get some runes and then I actually am able to buy that self. So here I can buy myself and fly it out to me. Um, so they can actually go back into this lane and this crop is going to be level 6 soon, so it's a really tough position. Since crop is 6, I must be very careful um, when I ever lose some of these grave paper cloak stacks, we see with Shadow Strike. Um, I have to be very careful. I need all the grave paper cloak stacks to just be able to survive if she blinks forward and uh, ulties me. And she also finds a region rune. And now she goes forward. Um, she hasn't used the region rune yet, so she doesn't actually have mana for Sonic Wave. Honestly, I feel like if she would have eaten a mango and Sonic Wave, she would have gotten a kill here. But she doesn't go for it, so I survive. I'm healing myself back up, and I'm almost level 6, so I'm just going to try to um, be around here, hopefully not get denied too much, and then I'm going to have my birds, and the birds are actually really strong in squab. I guess any sort of range here, the birds do a lot. I guess melee heroes level 1 birds are not that great, because they have the damage block, so birds... Uh, go down from doing 20 damage on average to just uh, doing 12 damage. So um, I guess melee heroes that just don't do that much, but I guess ranged heroes are quite good. So I, I don't see Queen of Pain anymore. I think she's missing, but actually she's still there. Blinks forward. So what we're going to do when she blinks forward is just uh, um, use your Grave Challenge attack with the birds. And I got a really good trade here. Um, but just in a moment, she's going to want to go on me again. And here. Uh, I'm kind of slow on hitting her, um, so now we're both kind of low, but she has a, a, um, a bottle and now she comes in and I'm, I'm uh, uh, potatoing a little bit here, I should have uh, dropped those birds a bit earlier here, um, and also just I was a bit too greedy here. So I die, but that's it's not the biggest deal. Um, it's unfortunate that I'm losing this XP from the wave pushing in. But I mean, she used her Sonic Wave, she used all her mana, so it's it's not the end of the world to die here against the Corp once or twice. So now that she doesn't have Sonic Wave, I don't really have to fear very much. I'm just uh, being careful not to lose my familiars. Uh, losing familiars when they're still on cooldown is one of the worst things in the world to understand. Um, so, just being careful, sticking around with the familiars um, so that they get my aura and don't die too quickly. Um, so. At this stage of the game, when you've lost your lane, you just want to like, farm this camp and push out the wave. Farm this camp, push out the wave. And maybe if the wave is very far forward, uh, farm this camp. That's basically what you want to do. And uh, the goal you're going for here is your dominator. That's uh, Once you have your dominator up, uh, then you're um, quite strong. But before that, if you just have your birds and no dominator, you're not actually doing that much against most heroes. I went half life here. I'm actually a bit uh, too optimistic here, and the Queen of Pain is gonna go on me here uh, using her Sonic Wave, and I am going to die. But we have a Spectre haunting in, and she gets the kill in return. So um, it's bad for my farm, but it's great for Spectre's farm, so um, uh, actually a good exchange, but uh, um, for my game, it's still a problem. It's still very, very poor. But um, it's, it's still okay. I mean, this this Queen of Pain is uh, is n has not really rotated. She's just uh, stuck around in mid. And uh, just if you can keep Queen of Pain in the mid lane, that's already kind of a win. So um, I've I've got that going for me. So even though I am having a terrible game, my other two cores are doing really well. Um, Axe has sort of marginally won his lane, and um, uh, Spectre is doing really well in the, t the top lane. So. Um, it's actually fine. The enemy are like slightly ahead in terms of net worth, but it's it's basically dead even. And if you're playing with a Visage and a Spectre and you're even after the laning phase, that means you're doing quite well. But now Quop is rotating and um, we're try to get this axe here. It's a very smart move of her and of course what I'm doing in, this, in the meantime is uh, pushing this tower. He's trying to do some damage on it to uh, punish them a little bit for this uh, um, play here, but of course they get the two kills. Very nice for them, and I don't really get that much tower damage done. 
I finally have my Dominators, of course I go here and uh, take this uh, Centaur. Centaur is one of the strongest groups at the start. Also Hellbear Smasher, very strong. Or can always also take an Alpha Wolf. These are basically the um, three top pre because we're going to have as uh, Visage. And uh, Co-op does of course have very ballsy TP here, so I just stun her and uh, cancel that TP very nicely. Um, but try to go for the kill attempt here, but uh, she blinks out in time and uh, uh, survives. But Spectre wants to go in there again, try to repeat her old tricks, but uh, it doesn't really work out for her. So now she's kind of behind the tower and she's not really haunting back in time, so it's kind of uh, caught out, so I try to help her out, um, but I can't really. And I'm gonna try to go for a, a counter kill at least. If we kill this Charikop, it's, uh, it's going to be a reasonable exchange. So I kill the Gyrocopter, but I'm also going to die myself and also I should have actually run with this uh, Centaur a bit earlier. Um, yeah, I tried to run with him and I tried to deny him, but uh, it's very difficult to deny with a uh, 20 damage per million that's being slowed down um, from this uh, Liquid Fire. But at least I managed to deny this Illusion Rune. Um, you have to be very careful with those familiars when you're not around because you don't, you're no longer providing the, uh, the aura here. Um, and this aura is really what, uh, what makes your familiars tanky. If you have all four layers of your aura up, it's 80% damage reduction, which is obviously uh, a lot. That basically means your familiars are almost invulnerable. And it only works against enemy heroes, so uh, from creeps and towers and so on, they still take the full amount of damage. But against heroes, you basically take almost no damage, as long as you have those four Gravecubus Cloak or stacks up, and of course you need to be nearby. So once you die, your, your birds are quite squishy, they only have 500 HP. Uh, so be very careful when using your birds when you're not around. So I find a Alpha Wolf, I ping that out, or at least I, I tell Spectre here, I think on VoiceCom, uh, that uh, I want that Alpha Wolf. Um, as I said, also one of the strongest creeps, uh, of course, gives you 30% uh, bonus damage, which is great for those familiars. And um, with that bonus damage combined with the bonus damage from Helm of Dominator, um, you're actually now doing some, some uh, reasonable amount of damage. And uh, especially if you're playing its melee heroes against that damage block, uh, getting extra bonus damage from Alpha Wolf is, is really helpful. And at this stage of the game, I'm level 11, and I really want that level 2 familiar. That's so important. It makes the familiar so much stronger. It gives them um, bonus 20 damage, going from 20 to 40 damage, doubling their damage. Uh, so that's so important to get this uh, this level 12 uh, early on. Honestly, it's probably the biggest power spike that Visage has, even even uh, bigger than the level 6 power spike. And uh, this is really when you can uh, do some some serious damage with your birds. Um, so I find a double damage here, and my team is fighting here, and it's not really going well. Um, Dark Willow gets off a good ultimate here, and everyone's fleeing, but then she also walks in again. So I decide to help her, which is a bit stupid. I mean, she shouldn't have gone in there, also, but also I shouldn't have gone back in there, or in there at all. Uh, so yeah, I, they're going to chase me down, and in these kind of fights, you can try your best to, to uh, stun people with your familiars. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do, but I'm uh, being a bit too slow on it, and everything dies, and everything is horrible. So even the link phase went quite well. Uh, these mid-game fights are going horribly, so now the enemy team is 3k ahead, and um, we're just feeding one after the other. And now Grimstroke is kind of in trouble, uh, so we're trying to save him. XTP is in here, and uh, but could have played this too mobile well for him. So our Grimstroke um, is also going to die. Um, now the enemy are also quite deep, so I um, have to be a bit careful here, but uh, they get out all of them and uh, yeah, they just get, I think they got like four or five kills in that exchange without really losing anything. But Spectre once again going for this cheeky haunt and she's gonna try to go for that uh, Queen of Pain and gets the kill and now it's uh, all about escaping. Uh, she can stunt you up by the Earth Shaker, but she can uh, run over there. Uh, using the trees very nicely and she's gonna have a dagger in uh, three seconds and she's gonna make her a great escape but a shaker alters her but of course it's an ultimate where no one else is nearby so it doesn't do that much damage and the spectre gets on the other side and can just tp they used all their stuns so uh, really well played by spectre and um at least giving us some sort of compensation for all the damage that the enemy did to us. And this puts me in the very rough position of having to resummon my familiars at level 11. Uh, but you kind of had to do it. If you don't have any familiars, 
it you just farm so slowly, so I'd rather just summon the level 1 familiars and then uh, farm my level 12 more quickly um, than not have familiars at all for like a minute or two. So let's talk a little about why this is a bad Visage game. Well first of all it's a bad mat lane matchup against Queen of Pain, we talked about that already. But then also, that's just a ton of AoE damage on the enemy team. Like every single hero on the enemy team has a significant amount of AoE damage. And much of it is also AoE damage that's in several instances, so if you look at the flag cannon, there's several instances of damage, which um, is uh, good against your Gravekeeper's Cloak. Um, when the fight breaks out here and Co-op assassinates our Grimstroke and we just kind of have to run here. We have no business fighting this and um, yeah, Axe is also going to die I think. Dress is going there for some sort of call but it's not going to work. And um, I positioned my birds nearby here to maybe help him but uh, I saw there was no way of helping him so I just ran away and uh, now I can resummon and get those level 2 familiars which I should be doing uh, right away. But I'm a bit slow on that, uh, so that's uh, my bad, but now finally I summon them and also take over this Hellbuster Smasher, which is a great neutral group to take with your Dominator. Um, has that nice little nuke and then slow, but of course also provides the Swiftness Aura, which is great for your familiars, just uh, basically straight up boost at DPS by 15%, which is uh, pretty great. And um, now we're trying to chase the enemy here, I'm not sure if that's really a good move, but... Uh, um, Pagna gets a bit cocky here and uh, is caught out in the front and um, I can just nuke him down and he survives for a surprisingly long amount of time but now he dies and uh, Axe is also in there. Um, so in this fight it's very important just to, to be able to keep up your Gravekeeper's Cloak charges. As long as you do that your birds are almost invulnerable. Once the charges are gone your birds become uh, made of paper and uh, it's usually best just to land them uh, as, as soon as possible, just to save them um, for the moment. And I exchange my helmet here for an Alpha Wolf, um, also a great creep, of course. So yeah, the enemy lineup, lots of AoE damage, lots of staggered AoE damage. Urshrek has multiple damage instances with Echo Slam. Um, you have lots of uh, damage over time from Shakiro. It's just not a very good lineup to play Visage in. But as you're going to see in, as the game develops, uh, even if it's a bad versus game, you can still do quite a lot. And you're gonna see my birds die quite a bit in these team fights in this game, but uh, even so, you can still dish out a good amount of damage with your solo assumption. And um, if you play it smartly, your birds, even against all this area, you can still survive for uh, quite a long time. Um, so the first item I'm going for here, after Dominator and uh, Medallion, is going to be a pipe. Pipe is incredibly strong, it's an enemy lineup, they have so much magic damage. So a pipe is absolutely essential here and um, it's like in maybe 95% of, of Visage games if you play in the middle lane you're gonna want to have a Dominator, a Medallion and a pipe. Pipe is just so strong it makes your birds so much uh, so much tankier. It just gives them directly some, some magic um, resistance and, um, and magic damage block but also more importantly it uh, it protects yourself so that you don't lose those uh, Gravekeeper's Cloak stacks. And um, so that's why it's basically like double the effect on your birds. So right now the enemy team are up by 5k and they want our bottom tower. And they have a, quite a strong push lineup. Um, Jakira of course is very annoying here, you can just uh, chunk on your towers uh, over time. Um, Dark Willow is a bit far forward here but she escapes here. and. Our Grimstroke is a bit too far forward also, also gets jumped, but um, now we get a nice call on Queen of Pain, so um, she's very low now, has to be very careful. Uh, Jakiro tries to go on me here, but uh, it's, uh, he kills the Willow, so that's, uh, that's fine I guess, but he's gonna die here. Um, look at that kill. Um, the Scream doesn't really affect me because I have my, my, my stacks up, and now I can just chase this Gyrocopter. Um, just trying to use my soul assumption uh, of cooldown every time and just doing so much damage with that because in those team fights you always get those stacks up. Uh, we see this ultimate from our Earthshaker but uh, I survive easily here with magic wand and now I'm actually completely fine in this situation here. I can just uh, keep going here. Earthshaker um, wants to go on me but he has no echo. Um, I have my charges back up 
at least most of them, three of them, so I take no damage here. And um, I just can easily get this kill, and that is a triple kill. So obviously this, this fight is very close, uh, they could have gone um, the other direction as well. Uh, we've got a little bit lucky here. But uh, it just shows you how strong Visage is and how much damage you can dish out just with your solo assumption uh, in those fights. Spectre has Haunt again, so we just want to make some sort of plays as four and uh, try to see if we can catch someone for Spectre to Haunt in then and create a numbers advantage for us. Uh, the Lord jumps in here and um, once again in these fights I want to try to stay away out of, of all the AOE that they're providing. I want to keep up my Gravekeeper's close charges and I just want to spam out my uh, Solar Assumption here. Um, this spell has a lot of range, so um, you can cast it from quite far away. And uh, so we win that fight. And now, honestly, we should be going for Roshan, but uh, kind of waffling around here and uh, trying to go for this Queen of Pain. Um, she blinks away, and uh, it's quite difficult to catch a Queen of Pain, of course. Um, but we're going to try, and she has to use her BKB here. And um, I'm not sure what Urshak is thinking here. This is not a fight they can really realistically take, so we just kill them all, and um, yeah, I'm not sure what they were thinking there. This is not a fight that's ever going to go well for you. Um, but really, we should have been doing Roshan, and, uh, but since the enemy were willing to fight here, um, we of course get those kills, so it's nice, and now we should be going Rosh, but uh, once again, we're not doing that. That's something I found that... Um, um, this is like a... 4.5 5k average game or something like that um, but even this at this level people are still I feel like far too reluctant to go Roshan um, and we definitely could have gone Roshan in but instead we go for this tier 2 tower and um, we're gonna take that for free and now we should be going for Rosh but uh, we're not going to instead we're going to poke onto this high ground which is uh, also okay we, we force out an ultimate here um, that's pretty good and Spectre <laughs> fails her meta dodge, but um, that's fine, it doesn't really matter very much. So we talked about how Dominator, Medallion and Pipe are these items that you almost always go for if you're uh, mid-Visage. What you get afterwards is uh, very wide open, there's a lot of different possibilities. In this game I'm opting to go for Greaves. Now, um, this mech is a very strong item here because they have so much AoE damage that uh, I'm always going to get a huge amount of value out of mech. And uh, then just upgrading to Greaves makes a lot of sense. Arcane Woods are quite strong in Visage because uh, not only do you need some like mana sustain item, you also need like uh, just extra mana to play with in the fights because you're just spending so much mana in the fights. Solar Assumption costs 150 mana, it has a 4 second cooldown, so you're using tons of mana here. So it's very useful to have mana boots. And then of course Mana Boots and Mac uh, naturally leads into Greaves. And also there's a, quite a bunch of things that you can dispel here with Greaves. Trakiro comes in here, uh, wants to die I guess. Um, so you oblige him, get a nice call here. Unfortunately you don't get, don't get the Earthshaker here but that's um, fine. So yeah, there's a lot of things you can dispel here with Greaves. Uh, the, the Dagger from Quap, you can dispel um, the Crab, uh, you can uh, dispel the Dual Breath and, uh, and Liquid Fire. So, yeah, there's a lot of good things you can do with Greaves here, and of course just the extra sustain it provides is uh, very useful, because we're the stronger team right now, we actually want to put on pressure, even though we have the Spectre in our lineup, um, we are much stronger in the team fights, so that is what we want to exploit, and if you're winning the team fights, it's important to have some sort of sustain item that then allows you to get objectives after um, winning a fight. We go for a smoke, try to find someone, and we see Ursheka is initiated on, and uh, that is going to be an easy kill. I just use my familiars on him, and of course, uh, I use my nuke whenever I can. And I'm going to go for more. Uh, you want to fly forward here with your birds and then stun, and that's what I do exactly here. So we get more kills. So when you're playing with a Spectre, it's very important to enable her to be able to farm as uh, much as possible. I'm just going for this creep camp here, and I'm just going to help her out a little bit here. I'm going to uh, throw my medallion onto this big creep and I'm going to stomp with my Santa Conqueror and this way Spectre was able to do this camp without losing any HP. Um, if she does it without my help uh, she's, she's going to clear her a bit, uh, a bit uh, slower and uh, she's probably going to lose like uh, 500 HP at least. So a um, uh, nice little thing to help out uh, your carry 
And especially if you have a spectre, of course, it's so important that spectre gets a farm. Speaking of enabling spectre, my next item is going to be a solar crest. Of course, if you buy a medallion, eventually you want to upgrade the solar crest. Um, when you do that, is kind of situational. Like, if there's another pressing item you want to buy, go for that first, which is why I went for Guiding Griefs um, first. I think that's going to help us more in team fights. But um, here in, in this game, next item is going to be this uh, Solar Crest. It just helps Spectre out so much. Also, just if Axe jumps in, it's uh, really helpful on him to have the extra armor. And um, so it's just a very nice item to get for this stage of the game. We go for another smoke here, and whenever you're playing with Spectre, uh, usually when she has haunts up, you want to do something this for, and ideally to do some sort of smoke gank, trying to find someone, and then you're almost always fighting with a numbers advantage. So we're running through the jungle, not really finding anyone so far, but now we see this uh, Pugna and this Queen of Pain. X immediately gets off a call, so we assassinate this uh, Queen of Pain, and uh, I'm now beyond godlike, so uh, things are looking up. And we get three kills, don't really lose anything, and we don't really be taking damage here. So we're gonna immediately go high ground here with this uh, huge advantage. While we're pushing the lane, Axe is gonna get some bouncy runes, which is nice. And now it's time for the high ground push. We even have a catapult wave coming, so this is an ideal time to go high ground. We already forced out one buyback. Uh, Jarakob doesn't have buyback, and Queen of Pain has buyback, uh, but of course she would rather not use it uh, if, if she has a choice. So we go in here just with the birds and Spectre. Um, Spectre is quite tanky, and I honestly don't like that Spectre is uh, jumping in here, but it works out. The uh, problem here is that I have to stay back here. I don't, I can't run through the macro pyre. It does too much damage to me, and it's gonna um, drain my Grave with Cloak stacks. So I have to stay back here. But my team was uh, uh, strong enough to be able to get uh, that extra kill, and uh, um, so. We didn't, didn't get any sort of objectives out of this, we just put uh, um, a thousand damage on this tower, but we also got you know, buybacks, we got uh, good kills, and a really successful uh, first attempt at high ground. So we're trying for the high ground push once again, and what I'm going to do here is just I'm going to stay back, I'm going to use my birds, and I'm going to constantly put the solar crest onto our spectre, and um, as long as I have my charges up, these birds don't really die very quickly. Um, but against the cliff, you have to be careful because the birds take full damage from towers. Uh, so I run in my center, which is a mistake. I should have kept that further back. Um, they engage us, and my birds die almost instantly. But I can resummon them, and I can still do so much damage with my soul assumptions. And uh, of course, providing my auras to my team, using my griefs, using my five insides. And they're going on me now, which means I'm going to lose my stacks, which means the birds and our food. You have to be very careful. I'm kind of flying my birds here through this macro pie, which is very, very bad, and I'm actually going to lose one of the birds. That was purely missed micro from on my part. Um, but uh, it's okay, because we're still going to take this, uh, this tower, because still two people dead, and everyone on our team is still alive. And a big part of the reason why is that I'm providing all these auras to my team. Uh, which just makes him a lot uh, stronger and a lot more difficult uh, to actually kill us. So I'm just staying back here, staying in the outskirts of the fight, and um, trying to constantly buff uh, my, my Spectre. Um, actually, here yeah, I think I buffed someone else. Um, yeah, my villain was going, being gone on, so um, I buffed her, and now I can just take these Raxes. And now, from here on out, the game is, uh, is basically in the bag. We're up 13k, we have a uh, lane of Rex here, getting a second lane here. And um, from here on out, it's just mopping up the survivors. And I go for a Drums here, which is a really nice item we want to finish the game. And just in general, it's quite a strong item on Visage. The extra attack speed is quite valuable for your birds, as well as, of course, for uh, the rest of your team. So, if you ever fall behind on Visage, uh, don't despair, you're incredibly strong in the mid-game, as long as you don't, don't feed too much, uh, even if you lose your lane, you can still contribute a lot into the game, and that's exactly what I did in this game. Even though it was a horrible Visage game, my birds side quite a bit, but um, I'm still able to provide a lot of value to my team, and um, eventually uh, we ended up winning this game. So, you can see in the graphs here, I was actually, at the start here, bottom of the net worth for here, from like minute 3 to 4. I'm actually below all supports in the game. 
but from there I was able to fight my way back, get into the middle of the pack here, and eventually at the end I'm um, pretty near to our Spectre. So if you enjoyed that game, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and uh, click the bell, and always willing, I'll see you next time.